The muddy waters of San Cachino de Bagni in Tuscany probably aren't the first place you'd want to visit during a trip to sun-kissed Italy. Yet when fragments of bronze statues rose to the surface during an archaeological dig, experts realized that they were seeing something unique. There's no doubt that it was an eerie sight, but it was a truly extraordinary find. Indeed, it was one that really would rewrite the history books. Archaeologists are astounded after ancient statues emerge from the mud. This statue, which dates back a couple thousand years to the time of the Etruscans and the Romans, was uncovered in early October 2022. It goes to show what a twisty-turny business archaeology is. Just when you think you're onto something, another chunk of the past appears to challenge your preconceptions. As we learn more and more about the world's distant past with discoveries like this, our thinking is constantly being adjusted. The team investigating the region is led by Professor Jacopo Tabali, an expert on the ancient Etruscans and their history from the University for Foreigners in Siena. He's been working alongside Italy's Ministry of Culture, headed up by Genero San Giuliano, plus the Central Institute of Restoration in the city of Grosseto in central Tuscany, among others. The project has been underway here since 2019. San Cachino de Bagni is a hilltop commune in Siena province, Siena being its capital city. It's a tourist destination for sure, known for having beautiful views, though many who visit may not be aware of the area's archaeological significance. The place made its name centuries ago through a natural feature which attracted great interest from the mightiest civilizations. What was this feature? There's something in the water, you see. Specifically, the hot kind. Famous for its heated spring water, San Cachino de Bagni became the perfect spot to install thermal baths. They're thought to have been there since the 6th century BC, with visitors taking advantage of the relaxing resource. The commune has 42 springs, releasing water at a temperature of around 108 degrees Fahrenheit. These spas of San Cachino de Bagni have drawn archaeologists to delve beneath the surface and see what the passage of time has hidden. The 2022 discovery has called to mind an awe-inspiring excavation from 1972, when statues of the Rias warriors also made of bronze were found in Calabria. Yet this time things are a bit more exciting, for reasons we'll go into as our story progresses. Experts knew they were onto something when fragments of bronze appeared from the ancient quagmire. These preserved fragments included body parts albeit body parts from statues as described by Smithsonian Magazine. By the time the exploration was over, the team had an extraordinary 24 complete statues. Those, together with 5,000 coins and other long-obscured artifacts, present an eye-opening snapshot of the times. The statues reportedly represent gods such as Apollo, an all-encompassing deity of ancient Greece, as well as Hygieia, who embodies good health. She was also a daughter of the medicine god known as Asclepius. These spiritual figures would have been worshipped back in the 2nd century BC and the 1st century AD. Now, what Prof Jacopo Tabali found in the Icky Slop has actually proven to be extremely fascinating. You might even think that hygiene queen Hygieia herself played a hand in proceedings. We'll go into the significance of the team's finds and what hygiene has to do with it in just a little bit. For now, it's probably best to provide some historical background to the situation. That, after all, will be key to wrapping our heads around what the archaeologists have stumbled upon. As we mentioned, the statues come from a time of Etruscans and Romans. It was, in fact, a time of upheaval. We think of ancient Rome as an all-conquering empire, which shaped many aspects of modern society we know today. But in order for them to take over the world, they had to replace someone first. In this case, that was the Etruscan civilization, which occupied the center of Italy between the 8th and 3rd centuries BC. The Etruscans are associated with the Volanovan culture, Iron Age inhabitants of Italy, though ultimately it isn't clear where they came from. By approximately 750 BC, what we now know as the Etruscan identity was established. They relied on manufacturing and trade. As well as its use in statues, bronze was worked with to create horse bits, which went inside the animals' mouths. Cities then developed, though this process appears to have been organic, with no coordinated activity between the separate zones. 
Economic links were formed with northern and alpine tribes, as well as the Greeks, Carthaginians, and Phoenicians from further afield. To them, the Etruscans sent pottery and iron, plus wine and consumables such as pine nuts. Business expanded and people prospered. Things looked up for the Etruscans. Yet, as with any success, there came challenges. They had a piece of the pie, but other forces were hungry for more. In 540 BC came the Battle of Alalia in the Sardinian Sea, where Etruria and Carthage had to join forces against Greece. The vast Mediterranean region was looking increasingly crowded. The biggest fishes in the water were the Circassians, who managed to do some damage to the Etruscan civilization from Sicily. In 474 BC and 384 BC the Etruscans were attacked both at sea and on the coast. The latter date saw ports targeted and taken down by servants of Dionysius I. These blows impacted on trade and, hence, prosperity. It got worse. There was a time when Rome wasn't considered much of a threat to Etruria. Unfortunately for those latter people, the tables were turning. Celtic tribes had invasion on their minds, but everyone was going to get a territorial headache from the emerging empire that would eventually give rise to Julius Caesar and Augustus, the first Roman emperor. The Roman-Etruscan wars are certainly known about, but records of the period don't give away much, and there's no definitive timeline. The Etruscan city of V, a mere nine miles away from Rome, was repeatedly attacked from 483 BC onwards. This is believed to be the beginning of the epic struggle for domination, though it was by no means a slam dunk. Who started it? We don't know, but after a decade or so of taking lumps out of each other on a yearly basis, both cities decided to call it quits and announce a truce in the year 474. With a time frame of 40 years earmarked for this peace, it seemed things would settle down. At least in that part of the country. Elsewhere, Battles were fought against Greece on the water. Fast forward to 437 BC, and war had flared up again between V and Rome. This was the second of three conflicts involving the foes, with the last happening in 405. An epic siege lasted until 396, by which point it was game, set, and match to the Romans. In a wider context, Etruscans were gradually falling to the forces of Rome, by 264 BC the Romans had bested them and other rivals to become rulers of Italy. So, you would assume the Etruscan and Roman cultures were opposed to each other in every sense. Well, not according to the bronze statue discovery made in San Cascino dei Bagni. The statues pulled out of the mud by Professor Tabali carry inscriptions. Among these are family names. As you can imagine, you needed to be pretty high up in society to get your name put on a statue with notables having their details inscribed in both Latin and Etruscan. A powerful status symbol for sure, but what does it tell us about the two warring sides? The mixture of languages demonstrates to archaeologists that Romans and Etruscans appear to have set aside their differences when it came to spiritual matters. How so, you might ask? Romans are known to have buried many traces of Etruscan life when they took over. Maybe this is an archaeological jumble of the two cultures? Not so, as the evidence shows. What experts found is that, rather than being tossed away, the Etruscan pieces were inside a religious sanctuary used by Romans. The structure was then submerged in the hot water, in approximately the 1st century AD, as mentioned by Professor Tabali to Reuters. This suggests the deadly enemies weren't so deadly when it came to their gods and goddesses. The revelation that, when they weren't slashing and spearing each other in the name of conquest, the two sides shared a prayer, has been eye-opening for experts. Quoted by Smithsonian Magazine, Professor Tabali stated, this discovery rewrites the history of ancient art. He added, here, Etruscans and Romans prayed together. The discovery also sets a record in terms of its incredible significance. Never before has such a major hall of bronze statues been uncovered relating to this period in Italy. It's sending shockwaves through the historical community, both up on the hill at San Cascino dei Bagni and across the Mediterranean. The materials also matter. This area is known in history hunting circles for its terracotta statues. Bronze on the other hand? Not so much. Aside from the revelatory religious dimension to the statues and the fact they're made of bronze, their tremendous condition is notable. 
after a long period of time in the mud, you might be forgiven for thinking that any artifact would deteriorate or break apart. To use a comparison, there are an awful lot of marble statues from ancient Greece that didn't go the distance for various reasons. Indeed, we started this article by mentioning how bronze body parts emerged during Professor Tabali's excavations. So, it's highly surprising that the 24 statues were brought to the surface complete and looking much as they did back in the day. Why is this so? The answer behind the question of preservation lies in the muddy quality of the thermal waters. The mud prevented the bronze from being exposed to oxygen, sealing it away from the ravages of nature. Bacteria couldn't form, so the high and mighty could live on centuries later. This scientific fact is indisputable. Yet it doesn't answer all the questions experts have regarding why the statues are down there. With so much time passing, no proven answer exists. The assumption is the statues were dunked in the drink for ritualistic purposes. It should be said, however, this is a theory, as with a lot of archaeological speculation. Either way, the statues are in historical showroom condition, and the process of studying them has only just begun. The enormity of the find is clear from what people have observed already. Speaking to Smithsonian Magazine, University of Siena archaeologist Chiara Fermo commented on the fine necklaces and earrings worn by one of the bronze female representations. They may be statues, but they seem to bring experts face to face with a long-dead sense of fashion. Not to mention outstanding ancient craftsmanship. How did the Etruscans and Romans create these statues in the first place? In ancient times, Greeks and Romans spent around 1,000 years making statues from bronze. As described by the Met Museum website, bronze was identified as an especially suitable material during the 3rd millennium BC copper was also used, but it seems that bronze was preferred for an important reason. Once melted down, it held a liquid state for longer. Initially, statues were like kits that could be riveted together, with each section made from a sheet of bronze. Wooden pieces could be used in some cases to shape the statue. Bronze sheets were placed against the wood and bashed flat. The whole technique was called spherelaton or hammer-driven. Artisans then moved to the method of lost wax casting. With this ancient technique, a wax version is crafted of the statue or piece in question. Clay is applied to the exterior and then subjected to superheated temperatures. The heat melts the wax but preserves and hardens the clay. Liquid bronze is then poured into this fresh mold. There are variations to lost wax casting, but those are the basics. The last time Italy witnessed such an attention-grabbing excavation of ancient bronze was back in 1972, and the discovery of the Rias bronzes, which we referred to earlier. Comprising two warrior-type statues, the finds were made on the coast of Calabria in the south of the country. It was vacationing chemist Stefano Mariatini from Rome who reportedly came across them during a dive. Following a period of restoration, the pieces are now available to view in all their glory at the Museo Nazionale della Magna Grecia in Reggio Calabria. Experts aren't sure who the two-meter-high statues are supposed to represent or how they came to be together in the first place. The impressive physiques could belong to gods, athletes, or other prominent figures. Ultimately the experts don't know, but the ancient statues appear to have been made in the Greek areas of Attica or Argolis. Created using the lost wax technique we previously described, they are not 100% bronze. Sources note that detailing, such as the lips and even the nipples, are copper. As for the teeth, these were reportedly made using silver paper. So, now that these amazing bronze statues have been found, what happens next? As mentioned in official statements, the statues went to a lab in Grosseto, Tuscany, for restoration. The aim is to present them at a museum, which is being specially funded by the Ministry of Culture. Responding to news of the discovery, Italy's government has been fulsome in its praise. Minister of Culture Genero San Giuliano described the result as an exceptional find. In reference to the mixture of Etruscan and Roman artifacts, he says the stratification of different civilizations is unique in Italian culture. San Giuliano also sees the excavation as a driving force for the nation's cultural industry. With tourism affected by the COVID pandemic, archaeology plays an important part in attracting visitors. Egypt has been hoping to capitalize on some high-profile discoveries in recent years. 
Recent documentaries, such as Netflix's Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb, are highlighting ancient history like never before and bringing ancient civilizations to the 21st century streaming generation. Italy may be looking to generate similar interest on their side of the water. Who knows what will be found next? At the heart of this compelling story is the cooperation between two warring parties, the Romans and the Etruscans. The fact they appear to have tolerated each other's presence in the name of spiritual enlightenment has surprised archaeologists, not to mention inspired experts around the world. The statues may be made of bronze, but, for international interests, the discovery is pure gold. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.